The first play we're going to be going over in our West Coast Offensive eBook is going to be the X spot play out of the far tight slot formation. This is the play that literally got me started in Madden, so I like to do this every single year. So the setup that we're going to be utilizing first here is real simple. We're just going to streak that left side receiver, and we are going to uh, double team this guy on the left side. And essentially, we're just going to try to roll out here and hit this corner over here to the left side. As you can see, super effective against pretty much 99.9% .9 of the defenses you're going to face. So if they're playing base press cover four, base press cover three, this is really good. You don't have to roll out if you don't want to as well. You can kind of sit in the pocket uh, and just simply make some reads. But you can roll out with this scheme as well, which is what makes it kind of unique and fun this year, is there's a lot more rollout plays that you can utilize to kind of take advantage of the defense. So what are they going to have to do to defend this? Typically what I see is you're going to get some type of Mabel on the left-hand side. If they do play that cover two, if they are pressed up, this is going to get over the top of that cover two. Now the other thing that I wanted to say is let's say that they're utilizing a 30 and 5 double Mabel setup, and I'll cover that real quick here. Let me actually grab... A better cover two uh, I don't want that cover two press in here I want the cover two drop if I can find it I don't know if I have it actually in this playbook uh, we'll do cover two hard fly perfect okay so we're gonna go with a 30 and a 5 and we are going to talk through kind of what would it look like to attack a double Mabel coverage so if they are double Mabeling it would look something like this here as you can see and then they probably play cover two so what's really cool about this offense is again your the idea here would be you were like rolling out to the left side but if you're, even if you're not able to roll out, like if they're containing you really well, as you can see, and I don't have roaming and all that stuff in, in regs. So, and I wanted to do it in regs just because um, the cards in much, they, they, they literally changed like so fast. So to do content in mutt is kind of, um, it's like immediately obsolete. But anyways, so I wanted to cover, you know, kind of this idea. So what you can do, and I just want to show like, you don't have to roll out for this. But basically, if you wait on this tight end route, this tight end post is going to clear a 30. So as you can see how you can kind of throw it right off the top of that 30-yard cloud, it's kind of a makeshift double corner. Now, I am aware, you know, obviously that we don't have anything for them to have to use her on the backside of this. So, you know, kind of anticipate that their user will run with the tight end. Uh, but there's going to be some other things that we can do around that. But anyway, I just want to show you here the cool part about this tight end post. As you see, it's going to clear that 30 and throw it right off the top. So... All we have to do to make this super, super good is our second setup that is going to do really good for attacking kind of man coverage. It's also going to do a really good job of attacking double Mabel, and it's out of the same play, X spot. Most of the plays are going to be out of this play um, just because it's the best play in the formation, has the best routes. So what we're going to do now is, uh, and really all you need for this scheme is if you have Hot Route Master, it solves everything. You really just need a slot apprentice and a running back apprentice ability. That's all you really need for this. Um, you can get away without it, but I just think it's the best way to run the, the, the offense. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the slot receiver. We're going to Texas route the running back, and we're going to streak the left side. Now, in general, unless we otherwise specify, majority of the concepts we're going to run from this is we're going to have our two wide receivers to the short side of the field in, unless, again, we otherwise specify. So what you'll see here is we have kind of a trailer Texas concept. This is really good because this tight end post, as you see with that clear out streak, is going to be able to manipulate cover four coverage. It's going to be able to manipulate cover three coverage. And it's also, just like we previously showed, is going to be able to do a really good job of manipulating kind of that double flat, double Mabel coverage. And again, if you want to roll out with this, you can roll out with this. If you don't want to roll out with this, you don't have to roll out with this. Um, but in general, this is the idea and then what you're going to see is this tight end post is going to clear that 30-yard cloud. Now, real quick, I did want to let you know, if you want the full version of this offensive ebook, it's going to be available on our school.com community page. The link to sign up for that is in the description down below. That's where you're going to get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, both for NCAA and for Madden. So literally all the content uh, that you need to be able to get, become a better Madden or NCAA player is available on those sites. Now, what they're going to do with this play is oftentimes they're going to user the tied in vertical up the scheme, up the scene. This is going to then open up this running back Texas pattern and this drag. So as you see here, drag open, we're just going to juke up field and we're able to manipulate the coverage. So what they often are going to do is they're going to have to, you know, again, you got to just think through like, what are they going to do from an adjustments perspective? Oftentimes uh, what's going to happen here is they are going to take this guy and user him so that they can leave this yellow zone here. This is why the running back Texas pattern is super, super relevant. 
uh, because what you'll see here is this running back Texas. You can throw that before he gets to that yellow zone, and you see how we can kind of manipulate that little pocket of the play. Now, if you don't have the running back apprentice ability, what I would recommend that you to do is to utilize a running back streak. So the way we would utilize a running back streak is this is something you can have without Hot Rod Master. It looks kind of like a wonky route combination. Just trust me, the streak runs slow enough that it's going to kind of get into that pocket that is super, super good for attacking that coverage. So that's one of my favorite setups for uh, attacking the double flat, double Mabel setup. This also is one of my favorite setups for attacking man coverage. The reason why I like this for attacking man coverage is because every route is going to win. Now, if you do have the luxury of hot route master and you know that they're running man coverage it is a little bit more effective to utilize a tight end apprentice post than the standard post on this play because as you and of course we get terrible free form but the standard post on this play is not as good at beating man coverage as the hot route master or tight end apprentice post so just kind of keep that in mind but again, in general, you know, you're going to be fine either way. And then the main route that you're really looking for in man is the running back Texas pattern. Uh, it's going to be really hard for them to use her the running back Texas route. And if they, they pretty much have to full commit to, to using the running back Texas pattern. So it would kind of look practically like this guy would be in a hook curl. Uh, this guy would be manned up here. Right. And they would have, you know, kind of a coverage that looks something like this. So if that's the coverage that they ultimately end up just, uh, deciding to call this is where having that tight end apprentice post or even the drag route are going to be really nice check downs for for you for your offense so as you see here you can check down to that drag that drag is pretty much always a very safe read against man to man and then this time we'll actually show you what happens if we utilize the post that's on the play oh whoops i'm sorry i forgot to put put the defense in man coverage so if we utilize man, if we utilize the post that is on the play as far as it pertains to man, the biggest thing that I would be worried about is just in general, if you look at the route, it's not a sharp cutting post. So because it's not a sharp cutting post, this is where the problem is going to come. So what you'll see here, see how he kind of like drags his feet and doesn't move quick enough. It can beat man coverage, but it's not ideal uh, for attacking man coverage. So something to kind of think about, but that's one of my favorite plays uh, for attacking man coverage in the offense. The next play that we're going to be covering in terms of attacking man-to-man -man coverage, and really one of my favorites as well, is the play flats. Uh, this has the nice deep post route to that to that outside receiver, which is going to be really helpful for attacking man-to-man. -man. So what I like to do with this play call is we're going to utilize that tight end apprentice post. We're going to utilize a, uh, a simple slant route to the inside receiver. We're going to block this guy on the left side. And then with the running back, a couple different options for you here. What I often will do is I will wheel him, and I'll explain why this is really good for attacking man coverage in just a moment. But if you are worried about the spacing on this play, then what you can do is just put the running back on a simple table route or even just put him on an option route or an out route to manipulate and be in the man. The reason I like the wheel route is because let's say your opponent is running a cover one style defense. What I find happens a lot is if they don't have safety help on the left side, this running back is going to be super open against man. So you see how he kind of beats that guy on the cut and then he's super open over the top against man coverage. And I'll show that again. We've got kind of a bad uh, exploit or a bad uh, blocking there. So again, just wheel the running back and you can throw this like quick too. That's the cool part about this scheme is you can quick throw the running back to the flat a lot. It's one of the best features of the offense, but if you are playing just tra traditional kind of cover one, and it's because I'm sending four people that the sheds just go absolutely insane in practice mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to spy everybody. Um, sometimes when you spy people, though, it kind of messes up the man, which is why I was trying to do it without doing that. But we'll see if we can get this for you. So you see see how it messed up the man coverage and the defensive end manned up to him? That's the lovely uh, aspect of practice mode brings to the table. But in general, oftentimes, let me just do this. Just drop this guy on a hook. Okay. So oftentimes what happens is if they do actually end up calling the man coverage and you do have time in the pocket, this is what you're going to see a lot. So you see how you kind of roast the linebacker and you're able to throw this over the top. So it's one of the best ways to beat man because it forces them to have to put a deep half on the left side of the screen. So because we force them to put the deep half on the left side of the screen, that typically means your, your middle third is either going to come 
you're either going to get a middle third right here or you're just going to get them in shaded down man in general. If you get them in shaded down man in general, this is what we ideally want. The reason this is really good against shade down man is because this skinny post is got a really good chance of being a touchdown. So what you'll see here is, well, and of course the deep path didn't pull like I wanted him to. But the slant route's also available to you. But if you get them in the, if you get them in even just press man, so what you'll ultimately get them in oftentimes is a half and then this guy in a middle third. But let's just say, for sake of illustration, they don't have a deep half on the field or they don't have a middle third on the field. And I'll talk a little bit about hash marks and something you can do if you're getting a lot of cover two man. So what you see a lot of times here is this skinny post can, it can beat man. It's just regs, man coverage is a little bit ironically better than in mutt, which is kind of interesting. It's just because of route running thresholds. But this post can manipulate man coverage really well. Now, again, if you want to, just hit your tight end apprentice post. Your tight end apprentice post, your slant, both of those are going to be available to you. So just for just so we can show you we can beat man coverage, that's available to you. So you can hit that. But the other thing that you have going for you with this with this offense is you do have potential for a big play depending on how they structure their man-to-man -man coverage, okay? And, and it is a little bit of dependent on just the adjustments on the field. But a lot of times you'll be able to throw this post like that because they have to have safety help for the running back. Now your post becomes a very viable option. Now the reason that the deep half played the post is due to where we're at on the field. So if the ball was on, if we were running this with our tight uh, or our, our, our two receivers to the wide side of the field, then what you would see is a little bit of a different result. So here we're going to have halves, and we're going to utilize, let me see if I can do this here for you, the same combo. And oftentimes what happens here is that slant can pull that half. And I guess he's not doing it because we're compressed. Huh, interesting. So... If you get that, what we're getting here, another way that you can pull that deep half on the right side is kind of an alternate setup that you can go to here is if you have the tight end apprentice ability, go ahead and take your tight end and we're going to put him on a corner route. We're still going to do the wheel route and then we're going to utilize a motion slant across the formation. So you see here, this now looks like this and this typically will really manipulate that cover too, as you see. Kind of throw that right in that little pocket. And then you have, you know, a corner and you have uh, you have some other routes available to you as well. So this is a way that if they're running a lot of cover two man, uh, you can kind of manipulate that with this with this concept here. I'm getting screamed at. But you see, of course the deep half's not doing what we want him to. I think it does just have to do with the compressed alignment of this, which is fine um there's other ways to manipulate this cover two man like you could just throw the tight end corner um another thing you can do is you can there is a little bit of a seam in which we can hit this i just gotta have some time so you see here just kind of step right there right in between those safeties so that's an element that you can have as far as uh, your abilities your capabilities of attacking kind of that cover two man Another thing that I forgot to mention is the, the backfield. So in the backfield, you have these two running backs. The important thing to kind of mention here is based off hash marks. So when you're short side, the tight end will wheel to the, – the basically the wheel route always goes to the wide side of the field. So if we wheel the tight end, in this case, you see that he's going to go to the right. If we're on the other hash, then he would go the other direction. But if we wanted to go with this setup as well – this is certainly uh, a fine setup too. And oftentimes what can happen is this wheel can pull the deep half as well. See how he's kind of taking that attention of the deep half there to the left. So if you utilize some motion snaps or things like that, that would be a, a way that you could, you could uh, attack that. Now, since we're on the topic of the play flats, I did want to kind of cover the cover three bomb out of this formation. So the way we manipulate cover three is we're going to streak the uh, slot receiver here we have to have this post coming from the wide side of the field all right so it is a little bit of a giveaway that we're running this but in a no huddle situation it, it typically is fine and then you're going to use your tight end on a corner and then basically whatever you want to do underneath so if you wanted to 
run a flat wheel combo. You could do that, whatever you want to do. But basically here what you'll see is once that post kind of crosses the face of the safety, it's going to be a touchdown pretty much every single time against cover three. So it removes the ability they can really have to call a lot of cover three on you. And oftentimes what's going to start to occur is they are going to call a lot of cover two based on, you know, kind of what we do here. So the same combo against cover two, because we have this streak, there's a little bit easier of a way to hit this in the seam and you can manipulate the cover two that way. Really the best way that I have found though to manipulate the cover two, and this is kind of a little bit of a setup here, but if you just motion this guy out, it changes everything about how this cover two is going to play. And so because of this motion out, now you can run a little, you have a little bit more space here. So you could run a concept like this or even a wheel, uh, but this slant post concept right here is going to just absolutely annihilate the cover two because of the fact that now that deep post doesn't come into the grid of the safety. So we'll kind of showcase that a little bit better here. And hopefully the offensive line will actually block. It's crazy how, even though we're only sending three, the offensive line is deciding that we're just not going to block. So you see here, see how that post, see how it goes down? And then you can throw this over the top. So that's the idea. Um, and it just doesn't work as good if he's compressed. Now, what does work really well because of the compression alignment of this formation is going to be your kind of standard like base alignment press cover four. We're going to have a really good shot at manipulating that as well. So uh, this is, this is a, a little bit better of an example here. But baseline press cover four, the same setup from flats. So we're going to streak this guy here. If you don't have a tight end corner, an out route is fine. You can use an out route as well. So you can just smart route the out route if you want. But this, I like the tight end corner. Again, whatever you want to do with your running backs here, because we know this tight end is going to go to the wide side of the field. So if we wanted to, we could swing the tight end and go throughout the running back, for example. Uh, but in general, the biggest thing here is once this post kind of crosses, you can throw it right there. And you want to be possession catching that route so that you get that dive down animation that can prevent uh, KOs. Now, another thing that's really good for this cover four play specifically is this setup right here that we're gonna show you. So what I like to do is sometimes this works really well with a, with a combo like this. And the reason this is so good, whoops, of course I ran commit. Uh, the reason that this is so good is due to the fact that the tight end post can pull the inside quarter inside for a step. So. Uh, even if you did a combo like this, for example, and you use the motion out running back method, this is also really good. The cool part about the motion out running back is it really allows us to do a lot of stuff, which we're going to get into. But you'll see here, if you wait on this, a lot of times he can actually get over a little bit better than he did right there. So cover four is a really good coverage just because that inside quarter is hard to manipulate this year. So if they if they are running cover four, that's, that, you know, like, OK. But if they're running cover four you have a lot of stuff open, like a lot of stuff open. So uh, just keep that in mind. But we'll do a smart route in route, and then we'll utilize a running back. We'll actually just do this. And we'll see if we can get this post open for you. And that time, actually, is probably the best at work the entire time. But you see, that's the idea. So you do have the ability to manipulate cover four, cover three, cover two from this formation, uh, which is really important. The cover two manipulation is a little bit of a is a little bit of a giveaway, but there are other methods to manipulating cover two, which I want to get into right now. So let's say that your opponent is running a thirty and five may, but which ultimately is probably what you're going to see a lot, especially on that two wide receiver side. So if they're thirty and five and out of a out of a cover two Mabel type technique, then what you want to do, and I'll show kind of what this can look like. So basically the defense looks something like this, but oftentimes in order to help prevent bombs, you're going to get these cover two, this cover two type deep half type stuff, right? So a couple different ways in which we can manipulate this. One of them is the use of motion with hot route master. So if I motion the running back to the right here, notice that it puts him on the wide side of the field and I can put him on a skinny post if I have hot route master. Okay. So what I can do from that is then I can call essentially a scissor concept here to the right side, which I think is super good. And then this can ultimately essentially manipulate cover two. You could do this, this, this simple combo right here. This can really manipulate that double Mabel. So you see here the corner routes really pull those halves to the sideline. And then you're able to throw this 
and if you, if you if you know they're running a lot of cover two double Mabel, this is a great option for you, especially if you have Hara Master. But another simple way to manipulate this is to utilize a streak to this outside receiver, and then we're going to utilize a wheel route to the running back. Now, what this is going to do against base aligned pressed cover two is it's going to put the running back kind of in a unique position to be able to attack this. Now, uh, as far as the routes around it, you could do a lot of different things. You could do a slant post. You could do a, I mean, all kinds of whatever. It doesn't really matter. The biggest thing I want to showcase here is the, the streak wheel concept. So the streak wheel, if you watch this wheel route, You'll see he'll clear that 30-yard cloud, and then you can possession catch that over the top for a big play. That's an option. Um, another thing that I like is if you go back to the flats play, utilize the wheel route and the post. And then from there, you can kind of, again, whatever you want to do. Like if you want to do something like this, you could do this perfectly fine. I'm just going to audible to cover two, and we're just going to primarily focus on kind of the, the double or the deep cloud flat. So if you look here, you see how that post kind of opens and pulls that safety inside, and then you can throw this in behind it. That's another option for you. So if you're trying to, if you're truly trying to manipulate cover two, flats is probably the best play for you. And you can do things like streak, wheel, post with a, I mean, something like this, super vertical attack. And if you watch this, notice here, if you wait on this post, sometimes you can hit it a little bit better because you wait for that tight end to really pull that deep half. And I'll, I'll cover that real quick. So, cause we didn't get into that too much, but like if they are running cover two, right. And they're, and they're double Mabel or double flatting here. The biggest thing I want you to see is the longer you wait to throw the post, the more accurate or the more open it's going to get. So if we go to flats corner right to the tight end, and then I would probably streak. And, and if you want to do something like this, but, Watch, watch here what happens. So you see how that, see how that half, see how I, there's this little window I can throw it, and I want a possession catch that consistently. So that is another really, really, really good, um, uh, really, really, really good, good method there. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about kind of the short side, uh, the short side Mabel that is likely that you're likely to see as you're kind of playing with this with this offense. So. One thing you can do is streak uh, and then wheel. And then, again, whatever you really want to do here. What this does, if you put that streak to the outside guy, it's a little wider. So it just helps kind of clear this a little bit better. And, again, you want to be possession catching that right on the sideline against the coverage. So that's that's an option that you have, uh, you know, to, to be to be able to to manipulate the, the uh, double Mabel. Okay. So another play that I want to talk about in terms of manipulation of a double flat defense is understanding that it's very likely that they are going to use this left side guy. And so oftentimes what's going to happen is this guy's going to be in a yellow zone. And if they are playing cover two, it's going to look something like this, but they're going to be here. And the reason they're going to be here is so they can take the running back streak, uh, which is, which is the next play we're going to be talking about here. So one of my favorite ways to be able to attack kind of double flat is this next play, which you could really do it out of anything in the formation, all right? But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to flat the outside uh, flat player. We're going to streak the running back. We're going to slot apprentice, which if I had a slot apprentice, I'd put it right here. We're going to slot apprentice post. Now you can do this out of flats. Like if you don't have slot apprentice, all you got to do is just do it like this, and you have this crosser. That's all you need. Now, again, I talked a little bit about the tight end. Always goes to the wide side of the field here. So what I like to do is essentially this right here, uh, this, this route combo. Uh, now, it looks a little weird, but it's really good for double flat. The reason why is because the first read that we're really looking for here is the running back streak. That's the route we want to throw. That's the best route for beating this. So what's going to happen is their user is going to run to the running back streak. So I want to show what that's going to mean. So their user is going to run to that running back streak and take that away. So oftentimes what's going to occur is the crosser or the post is going to be isolated in the middle of the field, especially with these routes on the field that we have. 
So they go there. Look at this middle of the field open up for this crosser because that hook curl gets pulled by the tight end on the or by that fullback on the wheel route. That's the idea here. So let's say that the uh, right side yellow zone wants they want to play a little bit more middle of the field with that. So it's going to look more like a mid read, right? So now they want to get a little bit more middle so that they can kind of take away that crosser in the middle of the field. Then what you're going to be able to do is if you just throw this, this tight end, you can throw this wheel right in this little pocket, and you see how we're kind of manipulating the coverage. These are really simple routes, and you don't have to have hot route master, right? But just simply streak on one streak, streak to the short side, wheel to the wide side, and then some type of uh, route to attack the middle of the field, which I like either a deep in route, a crosser, or a slot apprentice post. You're able to kind of manipulate a lot of coverages with this. So you see here again, see how we're able to kind of attack it with that post. The next play that we're going to be covering in our little far tight slot, little ebook here, is going to be a play that is really helpful for uh, kind of attacking the double flat cover too, especially to the left. And this play curls. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to try to hit this tight end up the skinny against this coverage. Now, this is a very difficult, in my opinion, this is a very difficult, um, not difficult play to run, but like it's, it's kind of a specific use, right? We're using it to attack this. So what I like to do, again, we have slot apprentice uh, typically with this, or we can use running back wheels. Um, but essentially what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, take the left side, and we're going to create a standard street corner flat to the left. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to streak here. Actually, let's do this. Let's do a hitch. So streak, we're going to do corner, hitch, and then running back route. Now, on the right side, what I like to do is put the tight end on a wheel. The reason for this is because this wheel is going to pull the deep half. And you see that right there, once that safety goes to the middle, you can throw the tight end up the middle for a big, big play. So that is an option. And, and I think this route is super underrated. A lot of people that run this formation, they don't really throw to the tight end much. And that's really what gets them in trouble. So you need to be throwing your tight end. But essentially, if they're deep halfing on both sides, a lot of times what's going to happen is this tight end is going to get open for a big play. Now, another way that you can kind of manipulate it is you can slant your inside slot. You can flat your outside and then wheel your running back. This is another method in which we can manipulate the halves. So essentially, the slant is going to pull the half on the left and then your half on the right. And you see here that this can be a eh, not, not the best – the running back would have been open as well, and I'll talk about that, which is important. So they can't cover both. So ultimately, we're walking them either into playing a cover four coverage or a cover two coverage, typically. So let's say that they're having these halves, and you notice that on the left, the half kind of goes to the tight end. If that occurs, then what you just want to do is throw your running back over the top of that cloud on the left side late. That's an option for you. And again, if they go user it, I understand. But I want to talk about the cover four. So what they will do to mitigate that tight end risk is they'll call this cover four here. And again, if they're pinching, because they're going to have to pinch to stop the run. We haven't even gotten to that part yet. You know, you can just double team this guy and roll out and just get away from the rush, right? But essentially what you'll see is this running back will clear that 30 once we, once we get out of the pocket. So... I'll show you that one more time here. We'll actually throw the ball. And again, we'll just don't worry about the rush right now. So let's see. If we just wait on this, see how that quarter is really going to that tight end route, and that cloud's not going to take the running back. So it becomes a super big vulnerability. The reason they would put that quarter there, the left side quarter, or even the right side quarter, is to prevent some of the other ways in which we're trying to attack the defense via the post routes and things like that. So now let's say you get this this um, this cover two. So if you get this cover two, this is where oftentimes the tight end, you'll see, see how we can kind of throw it in between the two of them. That is a super, super good read, super good throw to have access to. And if, like I said, 
if their user or if their half on the left side is sucking into the tight end route, that's typical. That's very common um, because of the hash mark that we're on. And what you want to do is just throw your running back. So you see here, see how he's kind of going in the middle of the field. And if I wait on this longer, you see how that half kind of gets back to the outside. That's another method. But another thing that you can easily do is just a simple corner route. Uh, the corner route will be a little bit better uh, in terms of it's just in terms of its ability to manipulate the tight end. So, you know, again, like if we had, you know, like a slant and then a corner and we could do whatever with the backs. A lot of times what this is going to mean is if they are in a cover two, this tight end. See, I can freeform this to the right and bullet pass it with set feet lead, put it right between the safeties. So that's another option. Um, another thing you can do is motion out the running back and kind of go for a little bit bigger of a play by streaking him. This is just going to open up the, the seam a little bit more. So you see here. See how the deep half has to go a little bit more to the right, and then I can throw that in the middle. Now, if they have KOs, that's a little bit more difficult of a throw, but it's certainly something that you have to manipulate the defense. I did want to show you kind of some freestyle stuff that you can do with the scheme from a rollout perspective, especially because most people are going to be pinching their dollar to stop the run. If they don't pinch the dollar, then you can just audible to any of your runs. So like halfback dive. Whoops, I don't know what I just did. You can really audible to any of your runs, like out of anything in West Coast. But just by audibling the halfback dive, this is going to solve it because it's really hard to shoot this run. And you can, with juking and all that, like these runs are decent. So I like to, what I like to do in my audibles is I like to have the full or the halfback dive. I do think the halfback dive is a little better than the fullback dive for my purpose of it. But then, like, you can audible around into other runs. So we can go to the I-form slot, which has the stretch alert bubble, has the dive alert bubble, right? Well, you know how good RPOs are. And then you could kind of have, you know, like just a basic stretch if you wanted, PA post shot. You have a lot of really good plays. What I would do is stick to the tight or the the – you know, like the, the tight sets near close flex is a, is a perfect scheme that you can pair with this. And I really like to utilize halfback inside fullback dive. And then you can kind of go into like, if you want to use short, the short corner from PA read, uh, flanker drive is really good. Post drag is really good smash. I like probably Texas the most out of any of the plays in here. Cause it's the most versatile is the best routes, you know, but you can kind of get to a couple of different things. So I'll show you what I would do. So, like if I'm coming out, let's say I'm coming out next spot and they are in a spread D-line dollar. Okay, well, then this is going to make this – whoops, I need to actually put the – make sure I have two backs in the game. Let me show that. So make sure you have two two running backs here. Otherwise, you can't audible to your I-form stuff. But I see this. Notice that one click over here, I can get to uh, I-form pretty easily, right? A couple clicks to the right, I can get to I-form. And now we're in one of the best running formations in the game that, you know, they have to respect the RPO, but they also have to respect the stretch. And we're going to get them to pinch their line. So once they start pinching their line, it makes it rolling out a lot easier. So what I like to do, a couple of universal concepts, just a simple tight end corner with a running back wheel. And we're just going to block the running back here to the right. And you can literally just do a route combo that looks like this. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to double team the defensive end. And then as soon as the ball snap, I'm just going to try to roll out. As you see, the contain doesn't contain because he's pinched. And then I can throw my tight end corner. That's a really simple method in which we can, we can really use this. Now, another way that we can do this is let's say that we're short or we're, we're on the wide side of the field. I talked a little bit about this uh, before, but a couple clicks, you can get to near close. So you see how I can get the near close here, and then we can uh, we can go to this. So the beauty of this is we have this corner. So we just do this. Again, they're going to be pinched. We double team here. Immediately roll out, and we can throw the corner on the sideline, right? And we would want roaming dead eye with this scheme because it'll make all those throws accurate. Uh, another thing is if you're wide side, then we can utilize the play flats which has this crosser to the slot. So another method that we can utilize with the rollout is we're just going to curl this backside player uh, or just even just running back, do a flat streak, boom, boom. And again, we're going to double team, instantly roll out, 
And now we're able to throw this on the sideline. So those are ways in which you can kind of utilize the rollout. You can also utilize this with your bombs uh, from the play flat. So like I talked a little bit about the corner route at the tight end. So they're going to – a lot of times what will happen is, especially short side, they're going to put so much energy into going to guard the tight end, right, that this becomes, you know, oh, they're not using the, 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 big, the big route on the field. That was actually a crazy container. I don't know if I double teamed him. So this is just kind of – it's just some simple ways – in which you can really manipulate the 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 front. So, so you see how I'm going to double-team this guy. Instantly roll out. And then I can throw this with Mahomes, and you notice how good this is, especially with Roman Deadeye. With Roman Deadeye, this is a really, really fun scheme. So those are some of my favorite methods in which to utilize this. Again, don't be afraid to audible around a little bit. So, like, go to near close – Run the play Texas, and we can run, we can run with our tight end apprentice. We can run this version of it, right? And where we're, we can roll out both directions and actually have usable routes uh, that we want to utilize. So that's pretty much the main stuff in terms of the scheme and, and how it works. There's some other little things such as utilizing running back ghost routes uh, with with a post route like this. I, I really like this combo a lot. Um, you know, something simple like this, really effective. And again, just anything we can do to kind of put the user in conflict over the middle of the field is going to be effective. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get into a full game breakdown with this offense as well so that you can see it in real action against real opponents. Okay, so I did want to get into my abilities and team setup for this scheme. And we'll just do an entire Mutt update for you while we're here. So, I'm not, I don't have the most coins. I don't play much, the most as, as, as much as some people, but I did want to just kind of cover what I would do uh, if I was running this. So real quick, from a strategy perspective, you want to have the West Coast playbook as, as your playbook. And then right now, defensively, I'm in Chiefs, and we're rocking a lot of 6-1. I'm actually going to probably switch this because I'm pretty much running 6-1 all the time. I'm actually going to switch this over to Pats, and I'll explain uh, why when we get into the gameplay. But you have the cover two, which is really helpful for a couple different things, like stopping RPOs, making it easier to adjust out of all that kind of stuff. Okay, so what are my abilities, and why are they effective? Trent Williams, I think, is a must for this scheme. If you take a look at his card, he's really inexpensive. Uh, but he gets the he gets a couple different abilities. He gets route tech. Um, he gets Vanguard for one AP, which I'm actually gonna probably throw on him instead of post up. I don't really think post up's that great, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw this Vanguard ability on him. And then he also gets the Backfield Master for zero AP. So he's a really really good card. And honestly, he might be he he's really 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 good. Now what I'm gonna do is what I would like to do is put the uh, the fridge at running back uh, with with his abilities uh, because he's got a little bit he's, a, he's just a little bit better for what we're going to do with him but right now we have Bo Jackson which is not a big deal uh, and we do have the charge of angry, angry runs on him I'm just just because I mean why wouldn't you but the cool part is he gets evasive for zero AP so I like that if you want to throw a bruiser on him uh, or tank you could really any running back that you want I like to have a bigger running back or taller running back as a rule of thumb uh, as far as the rest of the – the only receivers we're really going to use are Michael Irvin and Plaxico Burris here. Biggest thing is you just want 99 speed. If you can get jukebox on them or evasive on them, uh, go for it. So for the purpose of this scheme, I'm actually going to take this off of MVS because it's kind of wasteful to have that on him because we're not going to be actually using him. We'll only use two receivers. Then uh, offensive line, at this point in the year, everybody can get, everybody can get uh, secure protectors. Secure protectors are just the best the best way to do it, okay? Tight end, I got Parham here. Uh, take a look at his abilities. You could get a Vanguard tight end if you wanted to. He might even have it. I don't know if he does. No, he has Bruiser. Uh, but short end just helps him beat man coverage, especially on that X spot play. Uh, it'll help him with that. So, you know, you could put throw Vanguard on him. But, again, I you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, the biggest thing here is the quarterback, of course. So, secure pros. And then we have the quarterback, which is super important to talk about him. So from quarterback perspective, the biggest thing here is we want gunslinger, master tactician. I don't know who put hot route master on this. This is the dumbest ability ever to put on. Master tactician, which is hot route master and conductor. And then we have gift wrap, and he has set feet lead. So Andrew Luck, I like the best. You could justify 
very easily could justify Lamar Jackson just because you're going to be rolling out a lot more. Um, but I don't really run this. I don't roll out a ton when I run this. So I just, cause I just not, a, I don't really like to roll out, but the other ability that is important to have is roaming dead eye. This is perfect packer passing accuracy when standing outside of the pocket. So when you roll out, you're just going to release the right trigger when you go to throw it and it'll be perfectly accurate every single time. So this just gives you some more AP to be able to play with. As you can see here, even with all this, we still have eight out of nine AP and we're good. To, we're good to go. All right. Uh, defensive AP. I have some additional AP here that I really don't know what to do with right now. Um, probably just get secure tackler on a couple players. John Randall is a really important card. Darrell Revis is a really important card. But basically, we just have deep zone KO, mid zone KO. Uh, the cool part about these outside corners, due to the due to the prelits and where we're at, they basically have universal coverage. Uh, so we have Joe Alt, who I think is a budget beast. Your safeties, you don't need flat zone K on your safeties. So just deep zone, mid zone, and pick artists is is all you really need there. And then mid zone and lurk artists on these two guys who are my main uh, user defenders, which I think is important. Uh, and then and then really that's it. So And we're going to be in 6-1, so it's not going to really matter because we're going to be using, using uh, Chuck Halley every single time or Mylotta, whatever you want to do there. So anyways, that is it, and then we'll, we'll get into game. All right, boys, got a little gameplay for you with the West Coast Offensive eBook, and uh, we're going to be rocking our under center stuff. So I'm going to quickly set a couple audibles. Uh, that I like. I mainly just like to audible around to run. I don't really like, there's a lot you could do, you know, but at the end of the day, like you don't really have to do a ton uh, for this to be really good. I do like to have the play Texas and PA read here from near close flex. And then we're going to be in far tight slot uh, because we're going to be coming out an X spot every play. I'm just going to throw fullback dive in here and the curls play. Cause I don't really utilize any of the other plays in here. And then, like I said, we're going to be coming out in, we're going to be coming out of the next spot every play because it's, it's the main play we run. The other thing I wanted to say real quick is just make sure that you have two running backs, uh, Bo Jackson, Trent Williams for me, two wide receivers, and then your, your tight end. I, just, just something simple to make sure you can audible around. All right, so far tight slot. First setup or first play that we're going to run, we'll take a look at his defense. He is going to be in some 6-1. Um, 6-1 to me is going to defend this the best. So what I like to do is – you can the cool part is you can flip this formation really quick. We're just gonna run a simple street corner flat, kind of look out here, and then we're gonna look to roll out and we're gonna throw this corner and just possession catch on the sideline. I don't know how we didn't catch that. So I like to roll out when possible. Uh, you don't have to roll out, but I just think it, it just helps with the the pocket kind of breaks down if you don't, right? The pocket kind of breaks down if you don't. So because of the way he's playing defense with a baseline cover four, which is what I'm anticipating again here, we are gonna go with a little bit of a max pro setup and then we're going to utilize this tight end texas route so really good setup i didn't even i didn't actually use this in the in the ebook here we're going to let him kind of keep us in the pocket and we're just going to throw the ball away i should not have rolled out right there when you're in the middle of the field like this this is one of the underrated really underrated parts of far tight slot because you you kind of need to be on a hash mark for the offense to be really good so we're going to go to a little bit more of a basic setup here uh, on this setup Go with the slant post. Really was looking for that slant. He gave it to me, trying to get the first down. And now we're in a fourth and one situation. So again, don't be you, you flip really quick in this formation. So that's really important. Like you can flip the play super, super fast. So it's gonna force them to have to, you know, kind of play defense a little bit better, a little bit more. And of course, I got kind of a weird animation and I wasn't able to catch it. All right, so we're gonna be in six one as well. Get stopped on the first drive. Awesome. <laughs> Um, I feel like a lot of that had to do with me just being in the middle of the field and honestly, uh, just not having a ton of reps in the scheme yet. More, the more reps you get in any offense is going to make you significantly better. All right. All right. So, uh, defensively we're in six, one, I'm actually in the Patriots playbook. The Patriots playbook has the three, three, five odd defensive ebook that I dropped on my, uh, new school.com community page, as well as the six, one ebook. So if you get both of those, you don't get dollar. That's the one weakness of that. But in general, I do think six one is so good that you know you don't really need you don't really need dollar anymore uh, because of how good six one really is. And cover two is a much better play to be. It's cover two just is much easier to adjust out of, right? And six one is honestly, or I'm um, not six one. Um, what am I trying to say? The 
And he's going to throw right at me. 335 odd is actually really similar to dollar. It does a very similar. It's a very, um, it just plays very similarly. So the weaknesses of 6-1 are kind of mitigated uh, with with that. So that's what I, that's why I do that. All right, here we go. Kind of got him in a red zone situation. We'll see if he can throw through all the zones. He wasn't able to throw it through anyway, but then he catches that off of his shoelace. So kind of an interesting little start to the game here with my man, Math Boy 234. But we'll be fine. We'll be fine. All right, so – Second drive, the goal is to get on a hash mark <laughs> so that we don't uh, waste plays and we don't uh, have bad combos. We're not going to roll out too much. Because he's in 6-1, if he was in pinch dollar, you can roll out on 6-1 too. There is methods to do that, but I don't really – I feel like 6-1 is just generally it's going to be a better rollout defense than than dollar is, um, or at least the way the way it's ran, right? Because dollar, you got to pinch the D line. If you don't pinch the D line, then you know we're going to be able to do that. So here we go. We're on a hash, so this should be a little bit better in terms of how uh, how we're going to be able to play. So again, just streak corner flat with the backside post. Super simple combo here, but super effective. And we are watching that linebacker. If that linebacker blitzes, we're throwing the ball to the running back instantly. I see the linebacker doesn't blitz. He goes to that. We throw that in the middle of the field, and we're able to catch it. Pretty decent catch there. So now we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start rocking. Another play that I really like is this curls. We didn't get into this a ton, but I do like this setup of it. It's kind of like a wide corner. It's really good if they blitz. They'll throw right at that little quick throw. Super hard to use with that, and you're able to get out of there and rock and roll. Another rollout play that I really like is the tight end corner. Uh, we do this out of the play flats. So we're going to utilize the tight end corner. We're going to utilize a streak. We're going to block the running back. And then you see here. So this is a rollout play. It's also a bomb play if they don't use her at well. And we're going to try to get a double team over here. So we're just trying to get out of the pocket. Not able to get out of the pocket. I think I'm double teaming the wrong guy, actually. I, this, this shows how much experience I have with rolling out offenses. I really don't run them. Um, we'll go We'll go a halfback dive, just kind of see. See, this is why I like this halfback dive. It's like a direct middle field run, uh, and it's super, super good that way. Okay, so uh, for this next setup, I'm going to actually go to my triangle play. I really like this a lot. And essentially, it's just really good if they blitz, and we're really looking at left side. So you see how, see how we can kind of throw that right over the top of that defender? Really, really nice little route. The user has to kind of sit in the middle. So super good. Back to X spot, our best play. And he goes inside, which opens up the rollout. And now we're able to get back on the board and play some ball. So really nice little dive. When he doesn't contain, we want to make him pay for that with um, – because if it – but the cool part about this offense is if they do contain you, then you're able to um, – you're, you're able to – kind of staying in the pocket because those defensive ends are not ever going to shed. They're just going to sit in a contain. So you're really only sending two people, and oftentimes you can just kind of step up in the pocket and, and kind of hang back and be fine. So honestly, that was pretty decent, and we'll see what the defense can do for us here on this next drive. Wasn't super impressed with his little red zone scheme, so we should be okay defensively here. And we're kind of figuring out, like, where the – there's some other plays that we're going to get into – as well, uh, just kind of depending on on what he does. So, see how much fast. I just think cover two is just so much more easy to adjust out of. It's super fast. Yeah, there's uh, so he's gonna be in U trips. And Darrell Revis literally just was a statue on that play. So we're gonna send some pressure. defense here there we go send some pressure just let him know so the key with the pressure is it just you just send it every now and then you don't have to the cool part about six one and this is how i like to run it everyone knows how good the blitz is from six one so you don't have to like send it all the time either all right, pretty good d pretty good d we'll send that vert hook and honestly if you have to give up one thing in madden Give up the scramble. All right. So here uh, we're going to run a Mabel on the left. 
Let's see if that running back goes out. I'm going to take that away. Throw right into my guy. Good. Pretty good D. So he's just a little behind on his reads. Honestly, the routes are kind of there, but he's just super behind. So fourth and five coming up. This is a big down because this can obviously get us right back into the game, put us back in a, a good position. So I'm going to go with a 25 and five. I just think he's kind of trying to throw underneath the Mabel too much. And we're going to – we're going to send some pressure here. But we also mabled really nice. Able to get a able to get a good stop and get back on the get back get the ball back for the offense. So, first and 10, um we're actually just going to start with a basic run here. Basic run. See how see how you can get easy yards with this run? Like it's it's a super quick handoff. And uh, just just works really well. So now we're gonna go with a rollout play. Not even really a rollout play, but just a just a simple play. I actually had the tight end, but I didn't want to for I didn't want to test the user. All right, so he's just basically running cover four. So the next setup we're gonna run here is really good for cover, really good for the way he's playing defense. And now he did switch to dollar. So the first time anyone comes out in dollar, I like to go to this right here, just real quick, just to say, okay, you know, I've got some runs. We'll see if you can. We'll see if you have run D. You know, just to kind of, just kind of see, right? Nothing too crazy. But he is going to go to dollar, which is really what we want. I don't want to play. I'd rather play dollar than six one in this. See how the instant juke is so good. All right, so here. And I really like this combo right here. I think this is a really good combo. Boom. Very nice. So a little high low to the left side using the tight end as our backside flat. And uh, he is actually going to go ahead and quit out. So we're going to get into game two. All right, boys. Game two playing at the Niners Stadium uh, with the West Coast offense. And looks like he's going to go ahead and kick it out of bounds. I don't like being in the middle of the field. So I'm actually going to. Try to be a little bit more intentional in this game about kind of avoiding to be in the middle field. It's just not very good uh, with this offense, the way the offense is kind of built. You don't really want to be in the middle of the field. You want to be on a hash mark. Um, so we're going to try to make sure that we're not. So just going through setting some basic audibles. The main thing is I'm going to be in X spot. That's my main play. But as you'll see right here, uh, we're going to instantly – actually, no, we're on the left hash, so perfect. Okay. So we're, we're on a hash mark. So we're just going to run our basic setup here, street corner flat. And you see there, able to hit that corner route right off rip and be able to go into a huddle. Now, what I'm going to do now is kind of run some other stuff that we didn't run last game. So we're going to go to this setup. Really like this setup a lot. A little streak. There's the drag. Just be able to check down. And now you see here, see how we're on the wide side of the field here? So by a simple flip, I know it doesn't look like much. But it changes everything for us because now this rollout play right here is really good, and we're able to utilize the Texas pattern. So, and it's not necessarily just a rollout play; it's just a combo that's really good, and we're able to get on the board. Super, super effective. We'll see you on the defensive side of the ball. And actually, the guy went ahead and quit out on the first drive, so we're getting into game three for you. All right, boys, game number three here. Um, so hopefully, you're seeing like a couple, even just even just like my feel with the scheme. You're gonna notice that the more you, the more reps you get with the offense, the more you start to say, okay, this is, you know, I start to see like the patterns, how you want to run this scheme. So, you know, you're you're gonna get better with time. So don't don't, um, you never want to like not use a scheme after the first couple games. You want to really, in my opinion, you want to you want to keep kind of utilizing it, and for probably about like twenty ish, twenty to thirty games before you say, okay, this scheme's not very good. So, and clearly we've shown, like, this scheme is really good. And, again, the more you utilize it, the more you're going to learn about it and the better it's going to be for you. So, that's also super important. Playing a little empty bunch open here. And what I like to do also with my offense, and, and I didn't get into this, but if you really want to know how I like to learn schemes, one of the things I did want to say that I really – I don't talk about this nearly enough – one of my favorite methods for learning a new offense or a new defense is to go into a head-to-head uh, -head season like I am right now and run just one or two plays for the entire game. So you start to really get a feel for how the routes work, how the reads work, right? You start to really master one or two plays, which I think is super helpful. 
this guy's going to go for it on fourth and 30. So I wouldn't advise, wouldn't advise anyone else doing this, but uh, he is going to, he is going to let it, let it fly. We're going to try to pick it off so that we can actually get some routes, get some reps with the scheme for you. Okay. So we're on a hash and I don't anticipate this game being very long. So we're just going to rock with our main plays and rock and roll. All right. So, Really cool here. We're showing you one of the underrated setups that we didn't get into a ton. Uh, what, I, what I like to do is this one right here. This one's really good. And, again, if you want to double team, oftentimes you're able to roll out here. What makes this setup super good is it's a high low to the left side with the drag, but then the running back is going to hold that user. So, um, now here we got we got screamed at first play. So, this should be actually – we'll see what he does. I don't know how much he's going to blitz. One of my favorite things to do if somebody's going to start to blitz a lot – this setup right here. I love this setup for blitzers, heavy blitzers. Because, and if the, if the post could break to the middle, it'd be a touchdown. But you see how it does a really good job of manipulating cover two, cover three, cover four. And then it also has the running back wheel as a quick throw that is super effective for being able to uh, just quick throw against heavy pressure. A lot of people are going to try to man-to-man -man blitz you with this offense. The cool, but the what the big counter to that is the running back on the left side, because he's offset like he is. He's really hard to cover in man-to-man -man coverage. If he was um, where the fullback is, like if it was like an I form set, I think the running back would be harder to cover or would be easier to cover, and he's going to get a kick return. So cool, we'll be able to show you a drive uh, with the scheme here. But hopefully, you guys enjoy this. It's kind of like a little fun uh, end of year West Coast uh, playbook. This scheme was actually the first scheme that I ever, that I ever released in Madden. Back in Madden, I started running. I started running far tight slot specifically in Madden 2011, I think Madden 11. And then I started to really get good with it in Madden 12. And then my first my first video on YouTube was me kind of teaching people how to run this scheme. I actually learned it from somebody else. Um, named Madden Edge back in the day. So kind of a fun fact. But anyway, so if you don't want to bring the ball out every time, then you can just call a run, and that'll help you get on a hash as well. So the reason I like this setup better than the flood play, uh, I like it just a little bit better if they're not blitzing you because it really gives the routes time to kind of get open, and I just think it spaces the field a little bit better, manipulates the user a little bit more. One of my favorite things to do is go to the play flats, though, and then run run the combo, if I can show here, run the play like this. I think this is a really good play. And then our first, we're going to really quickly look to the running back here. So you see he blitzed again, so we can throw that quick throw running back. And then if the running back wasn't open, we can just roll out uh, to the other side and have kind of a unique uh, play. So he's probably going to blitz me again. So what I'm going to do here is this is one of my favorite methods for beating the blitz is something like this. And I'm looking to that left side for a quick throw. He actually goes coverage. Okay, no problem. We have a cover three beater to the tight end if he can catch it. If the KO knocks it out, KO knocks it out. But notice that the running back wheel is going to hold the outside third on that left-hand side. All right, so now I'm going to go to kind of a triangular uh, triangle, tri triangle passing concept is what this is called. Uh, and essentially, because this tight end is on the side, you can run this combo right here. Super effective. So what are my reads? I'm really looking to the flat on both sides quick. I'm trying to hit that. More likely, I probably have it to the right. Okay, he plays good coverage. See how he goes to that? Now I can playmaker that ghost route back across the formation. Or I could Texas route him as well with the, with the hot route master. So that's another thing you could do uh, or another way that you can. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I actually run the same play here. So. So we talked about this. You can do this out of the play flats, too, if you don't have Slot Apprentice or Hot Master. Um, but essentially, this right here is really a, a kind of a W setup here for what he's doing because the, the guy will come right back across where he vacates. Perfect. So you can use the Texas routes a lot. Um, I, think, I think just as good as a, a Texas route is a post. So here, go to this setup. Boom. And see how you're able just to hit these quick check downs. Now, we're wide side. We could flip it, but he's running a lot of cover three. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right to this. And then what I like to do is, is a double, like a, like a swing wheel. 
This little screen is going to hold the user. And then we have the post. Boom. Really, really nice. Really, really nice little offense. So you can run it on both hash marks. Um, you know, and when you're short side, there's certain things that are open. When you're wide side, there's certain things that are open too. Or you can just flip it, and it flips really fast because it's a compressed formation. So this is something in Madden that I've talked to, or that, that's really become a lot more relevant, and I think it's really underrated. It's something that's been in Madden for a really long time, but you're starting to see it matter a lot more these days is because you can have uh, setups that are wide side and short side that then opens up the, the ability to be able to run your offense in a lot of different ways. Uh, you could run wide side bunch, for example, but you could also run short side bunch. So then when you flip, you're not always flipping to the short side. Uh, you're, you're not always flipping to the wide side. You're kind of giving a variety and it really can throw the defense off because how is the defense really truly supposed to handle that? Um, it's, it's really difficult to do that. So anyways, that's kind of, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that if we get the ball back and uh, kind of explain, you know, why that matters so much. So just play some coverage. I think, I think getting more with the way the game plays right now, I would play more coverage than pressure out of 6-1. Like send three, send four, just because the sheds from six one are super good, and the coverage you just have a lot of coverage out there. It's hard to it's hard to beat. It's it's honestly super hard to beat the double Mabel if you can put a vert hook out there, because then the the vert hook can, you know, basically user one side and then your user can use the other. So you see like right here, the left side is dead. You can't really throw the left side here, and then you can't really throw anything across. So my user is able to really sit in the middle. So there's only a couple things that really beat this defense. See, that I'm just taking that middle route. Everything else is bagged, right? So, you know, double Mabel really is one of the better coverages this year. Another coverage that's really good is cover four, like this. Boom, and then send a lot of pressure. Now, he actually had just the perfect play call on the screen. And we're actually going to let him score so that we can get the ball back. Tiki Tikarillos. It's quite a team name. My man Eric Dickerson getting out in the open field. But essentially, what you want to do defensively is close throwing lanes. And if you can get – if like this year's game, a lot of people underestimated this this year. It's a little different now that secure protectors are everywhere. The send three in this game was honestly a pretty good deep, pretty good. So you could play, like, you could put a lot of people in coverage. Um, and honestly, double Mabel, there's, like, a specific way to beat it, and it doesn't, not everything does, right? Okay, so since we're not on a hash mark, the biggest thing I want to do is try to get to a hash mark. So, because it just makes the offense work a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to audible over here to I-form, if I can get to it. And I didn't put the stretch in here, so no big deal. But basically, you know, we're just going to try to get to a hash here. So, juke, get to a hash. That's all we needed, right? And you can do the same thing out of far type. Okay, so here, this is kind of a fun little play. Oops, I didn't mean to roll out. I'll have to check it down. He actually called man. That play setup is really good for zone. I'll talk about that real quick. Or, and we didn't talk about the, the hash marks as well. So, so the thing in Madden that's kind of interesting is if I want to flip a play, if I'm in trips tied in, it takes forever to flip that formation, right? It really does. But if I'm in like a formation like this because everything's so compressed, I could audible to the play I want. So like in this case with curls, we just flip the play. And now, you know, we're able to quick hike really quickly. You see here, I might have had that tied in. But then when we go no huddle, which is super important. So now when we go no huddle, notice we're here. And we're able to really quick hike, honestly. Right, so here we're going to try to roll out a little bit. Get out. Nice. I think I actually could, I think I actually did an illegal forward pass. 
Shame. All right, so X spot. So then, like, let's say, let's say I want to go to flats, right? I'm just going to flip it and then make my hot route. So flip it, boom, everything goes, you know, and then we're able to, you know, run the play, run the play like this, for example. Uh, another real underrated thing is you can motion out wheel routes, which is super underrated. Or you could just run it like this, but see how I'm able to roll out on this? Boom. Then I can just run the ball if it's available to me. So there's a lot you can do with that. There's 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 so many so many different things. Another thing we didn't really get into much in the ebook that I did want to cover is motion snapping. So like let's say you want to run a route combo like this. If you motion the slot receiver, he's not going to go all the way across. And of course, I say he's one of I, maybe the other one. One of them doesn't go all the way across. So that's another thing that you can kind of manipulate and utilize to your advantage as well. But see how he just cooks, man, coverage, boom. So that's those are some other things you can utilize. So, like, you could motion him or you could go, let's say you want to motion this guy. Now look where he goes to. He doesn't go all the way across. He's going to be more of a compression alignment. So now if we want to run this setup, we could do something like this, for example, which is super good, right? Now you're able to flood that sideline. So – that's just some different things that you can do, some different tricks that that make this offense super, super fun to run. I'll show you one thing out of the play curls we didn't get into. It's really good because he's going to be in zone here, I think. So doing something like this combo is really, really fun because this curl route is truly a middle of the field. See, how he sits right in the middle of the field. Most routes don't. Most routes don't go to that that specific spot. So that's a a fun little play. Another thing that we didn't get into a ton is, and you would you would need to either put bench switch or have have the hot routes, but do a corner route, and then we're going to streak the circle receiver, and we're going to wheel the running back. And what we're able to do is we're able to look like we're going to flood to the right, but now we're going to flood zones to the left side, and we have a snap throw read to the to the seam streak. I'll show you how you can do it out of a different play. So like this would be the reason why you might not want to have fullback dive. And you might want to have um, bench switch, for example, which is already in your audibles. But what you can do is you can audible to bench switch, wheel the running back, uh, streak the – like so, right? And then on the right, you could do really whatever you want to. But the idea here is that we're going to roll out. So I'll even just do block and release drag route. So you see here we're able to get out of there. And this rollout play is really good for like this kind of area of the field. Now, I did not – I threw that just a little bit too – I didn't throw that horizontally enough, so I ended up throwing it pick. But that play is actually a really, really – would be a really good add-in for the play uh, – for the offense too. There's 6-1. Just take away the middle of the field, make him throw the sideline, and we get the pick. So we get the ball right back. Perfect. All right. Run your tight slot. So we have bench switching here now. So now let's say, let's say you want to do. I'll show you some other cool stuff you could do here while we're while we're on the top subject here. So we can motion the running back to the right, and he's actually going to go all the way out to the wide side. And then we're able to run, you know, kind of this combo, which is super good. Well, we roll out. Roaming dead eye. Remember, make sure you take in your your hand off that trigger. So you see how you can really manipulate pretty well with this with this offense. Um, another really good really good setup that we didn't get into yet. Actually, I want to show you that bench switch one more time here. So all you need is the streak and the wheel. Everything else is pretty much like you can do whatever. There. That's what it was supposed to look like last time. You just got to catch it. But, but you see the idea. It's super open. It's super open. And then the curls play is kind of a sneaky play that you can mix in. So, like, the cool part about the curls, you're, you're trying to hit this tight end streak, right? So what I like to do is um, kind of have something that's going to pull the user down. So, like, a slant and a wheel like this. So my first read is I'm going to look to the flat. Okay, not there. But see, I can kind of sneak it in. It's kind of a sneaky throw, um, but it's really effective. And it just depends on the zones. It depends on the zones that they have on the field as to whether or not that's going to be open for you. The other thing you can do with this wide side 
Um, so we have short side left. So what I can do now is if I motion this guy across, he's now going to be a really, really effective clear out, clear out streak. So what I can do is I can do post like this. And then on the back side here, I could do flat ghost route. Super good. So you see here, boom. And then my post would have been open, but I didn't throw it. So now fourth and 16, we're going to go for it just because I want to show you some more, more reps with the scheme, and I want to talk about some things. So if you ever find yourself in this, one of my favorite plays, I just can't stress enough how good this bench switch with the wheel. And then, you know, you can really do whatever you want on the back end of this. What I'd probably do is just some, some pass pro, honestly, because you got to get out of the pocket for this to be super good. And he actually just went man, so he kind of made it easy on us. And he made, and, and Sertan made the play of the year. I got a free form. Sometimes with those corner routes, you can kind of have bad free forms, like I just did right there. You don't get it up to the sideline. But if you get it too much to the sideline, then it goes out of bounds, like I did the play before that. So, you know, kind of fun stuff. That's some nice 6 1 trips D. 6 1 is actually pretty decent against trips, even though people don't think it is. I form close. Like this coverage is really good for. Uh, it's kind of a mix in with Mabel. And we let him get out of there. And he's going to get some nice yardage. My man, Butterburger. I'm going to put cover. So you have quarters and Tampa too. So like if you ever want to go to quarters, just audible to it. Boom. And now you're in a really good coverage. You know, cover three variation. So, so what does the cover three variation do? It uh, takes away a little bit more of this, a little bit more of the intermediate stuff, and it's a little safer deep, deep coverage. I'll try to shoot this. Goes a little horizontal, able to get out of there. Good run, and he does get the ball at half. So it's kind of a important uh, sequence here. Another thing that people don't do out of 6-1 enough is pass commit. There you saw John Reno go crazy. I've actually been noticing a lot with 6-1. That right there, that animation happens a lot. Um, and I think it's related to pass committing. And standing like right here with your user, it kind of triggers this. And then sometimes, he doesn't always, but sometimes he does. And when he does, it's, it's obviously incredible. I don't get how you can throw that stuff against this defense. I don't – it's – it's like the, the deep halves don't react. So I'm going to put him in a quarter. And obviously, if he runs a streak on the left, he will have it. But there we go. Bo Jackson with the play of the game. And just, you know, a lot of people can't beat that coverage. A lot of people can't beat that coverage. All right. So far tight. We're going to flip it. So, like, a good, good way to go five out here uh, would be really to just motion this guy out, put him on a streak or something, just a clear space. There's that running back angle route. Nice big play. Second. And now we have 16. So, another thing we can do, just like we can flip, just like we can flip to short side, uh, we can also flip to the wide side. So, like right here, I want to roll to my right hand. So, we're going to do that. I was kind of trying to sneak the running back there because he usered everything, but it is what it is. Okay, so just like we can flip that way, another thing we can do, which is important, is we can again uh, – and, of course, I messed up my flip – so he's in cover three here, and he's going to audible out. So we're going to have to go to this. Quick wheel, beats the blitz well. Got about seven seconds. So this is kind of a key situation. So I know what I'm going to want to do, so I'm actually going to come out into play. I'm going to flip the play flats. 
but I'm going to flip it at the line of scrimmage because we get that quick flip. And he's going to think that I am wanting to run the corner route when in reality I want to run the post. So you see this is a way you can kind of manipulate that too. So boom. And there it is. Boom. Big play. And big flip in the game too. I mean, he was going down to score. We're able to we're able to catch it and we're able to score right before half with a nice little cover three beater against a cover three coverage where he was trying to basically use her that corner last time. That's a way that you can kind of play little cat and mouse games with people with this deep with this with this offense. And it doesn't you don't have to roll out to run it. That's the big part about the seam. Like it there's a lot of potential for the rollout, but you also have really good pocket passing plays too. So you you don't have to roll out by any means uh, to run this offense at a high level. I'm gonna go bunch tight in. A couple things he can do from bunch tight in, but it's basically this this is the the D you want to be in. Boom. Take that away. Force him into that. Now we're into the third quarter. So hopefully you guys enjoy the West Coast stuff. Oh, I get ball at half. Or I get ball. I thought he got ball. He's gonna go onside kick. This is huge. I thought he got ball at half. Now we can kind of put the game away right here. See if we can get a kick. I don't really know the trick to the secret method to always ensuring that you recover that. I'm going to try to run backwards, get you guys some more reps with the scheme. And the ulti obviously the other thing with this is this formation does a really good job of clock management. It's really good for clock management too. So there's a lot of benefits to this. So like if I want to run, and this is, this is a really underrated setup of this offense. Like this right here is a really underrated setup. And the reason this is good is because you have the rollout corner to the right. You have the snap throw to the running back. But you see, like, he goes cover three here. He can't guard that short corner. And that wheel route is going to pull that outside third defender. You know, or let's say you want to do it this way, but you don't want to give away the rollout. You go to bench switch. You streak like this. And then on the back end of this, we can go with the backside drag. Um, with the with this with this fullback here, I would you know probably you don't want to do that. Probably just want to block him here. But you see see how see how we're kind of manipulating coverage this way. So there's there's you don't just have to you know run basic stuff. You can kind of get to the things with the that's that's the real value of the running back positions uh, and where the running backs are at on the field. Like for example, let's say you know here we want to run. Uh, let me do this so. We'll just do this setup, a little Y cross. Now, what's really important in the offense, and I see a lot of even like top level pro players do this, they'll do this motion now and they'll run, they'll run Y cross every single time. So what I'm gonna do is every now and then, you just wanna change it up a little bit. So we're gonna go streak, we're gonna go drag, and we're gonna go drag. So two drags on the backside. Super simple method that changes things up, you know, and now they have to kind of respect that. So. That's the beauty of this offense is if you're willing to kind of make it work for you, it's, it's really, really good. Um, let me give you another example. So we'll go corner or we'll wheel this, this running back out. Uh, but instead of using the running back, we're actually going to use them as a check down, right? So they kind of have to respect that but then you have that drag come all the way across just like little fun stuff like that like you don't have to do too much um but you don't you you don't want to just run the same stuff all the time like every time i motion out it as a shriek because it makes it too easy to guard that's the biggest thing you want to be unpredictable now we got him in field goal block because he just doesn't know what to call let's see if i can throw this boom quick throw now with that quick throw to the running back you just want to make sure that you are not uh, free-forming it. You don't want to free-form it. That's the biggest thing. If you don't free-form that, now this little snap throw here is you can high-point it too as we get instant sack. I cannot stand when people do this this uh, field goal block type stuff. I think it's really ridiculous. There we just go to the bubble screen. I mean, this, this coverage... This should be able to just destroy that and break every tackle while we're at it. <laughs> Get down to the five. 
Now, I didn't cover a ton of red zone stuff. Um, and there's really nothing that's like super, super good. Like, they're not, there's not nothing super, like, there's nothing that's like so dominant that you have to know it. You know what I mean? Uh, the one thing that I do like that I didn't, t- I did not cover that I wish I would have is this play action play. So if you block this guy, and then really what I would do is just wheel, hitch, you know, whatever. But basically you can roll out on this because play action rollout is a little better. So you just roll out. And I have the guy open, but he got stuck. But that's that's something else you could do. I just wish we weren't doing field goal block right now, buddy. Field goal block is kind of baggy. And we haven't even got into all the things you can do from, like, strong close. Um, that's the cool part about the West Coast book is it just has a lot to offer. So, anyway. But we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. Thanks for watching the video, guys. He's probably just going to continue to run field goal block. And uh, if you guys want to get the full version of the offense where we break down everything you can do from West Coast, full ebook is available in the uh, school.com community. That's where you get access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, both for Madden and for NCAA. So if you want to sign up for that, link is in the description.